Scrumptious chocolate. Hello everybody, hello children, welcome to the very last online school field trip of this year. It's going to be my favourite, I think we've got a super duper one for you because we're going to be learning all about scrumptious chocolate. Oh yes. I'm Sam, this is Claire, she's Hi our children. expert for today, Hi, she's a chocolate expert, an amazing job. Now we're here in a factory, a chocolate factory in Poundbury, which is near Dorchester in the county of Dorset in the southwest of the country, not too far away from the English Channel. Now, I'm so excited about today. I have a feeling I'm not the only one though. So give us a wave and a cheer in your classrooms, children, if you're excited to learn all about chocolate today. <coughs> Great stuff. So Cold Harbour are really excited about today. We're going to meet most of you in a second. But first of all, Claire, what are we going to learn today? OK, Sam, today we're actually going to learn about the ingredients of chocolate, how chocolate is made and moulded into different shapes, about the history of chocolate and why chocolate became so popular, and also why, even though chocolate is delicious, we mustn't eat too much of it. Of course, just as a treat, isn't it, Claire? It's just a treat. Yes. So let's meet our schools. Let's see who we have taken part today. Let's go to Cold Harbour Primary. They've already, already given us a massive cheer. <laughs> They're in Milton Keynes, and it's Mrs Wood's class taking part today. Let's go to Greenway Primary now. Hello, children. <laughs> That's Miss Coupe's class taking part, and they're in Cardiff. Let's go to St Teresa's Primary now. Hello, children. <laughs> A very loud Mr Humphreys class there in Surrey. Let's go to Walsall now and meet the class uh, who's Miss Stokes' class in Beacon Primary. Hello, children. <laughs> And finally, let's go to Front Street Primary now in Newcastle, where we have Mr Hollingworth's class taking part. Hello, children. Wow, we really do have so many of you taking part. I think there's around 300 of you today as well. That's so fantastic. I don't know why it's so popular, Claire, no. this online field trip. I can't think why. <laughs> well, first of all, Claire, I'd love to know what is chocolate? Because I know many of us will probably eat chocolate without even thinking about what it's made of. OK, Sam, chocolate is actually cocoa mass, sugar and other added ingredients such as milk powder. Now, the cocoa is is made on cacao trees which are grown in the tropic. It's actually a little seed. Now the name chocolate actually comes from a word which is an Aztec word which means bitter water. Wow. And this is because chocolate is extremely bitter when you eat it in its raw state. So you wouldn't like to eat it like that. Now I've heard of cocoa beans. Yes, they're not actually beans at all Sam, they're actually seeds which are grown on the cacao trees. Wow, so chocolate is actually made from a seed. Yes, that's correct. Oh, fascinating stuff. There's lots of other ingredients in chocolate as well, isn't there? There's lots of other ingredients, um, the main one being sugar, which is why we have to eat it in moderation. Yes, you shouldn't eat it all the time. So chocolate should be just eaten as a treat. So yes, Christmas time, right. Easter time, maybe a birthday, Correct. special occasions. Yes. So whereabouts are we here, Claire? This is amazing. OK, Sam, <laughs> we're actually in the new product development room. This is where all new chocolates are designed and thought about. And then any successful chocolates here will then be made in the chocolate factory just behind me. Wow, you do have the best job ever. It's absolutely amazing. I can't wait to learn a bit more about how you came up with all these amazing chocolates later on. But I know that our children have been learning about chocolate before today to prepare for today's online field trip. So I'd love to uh, find out what you already know about chocolate, children. So if we can go to Cold Harbour Primary and find out what your favourite fact you've learned about chocolate is. In Mayan times, the cocoa bean was used as currency as it was con 
considered to be worth more than gold dust. Fabulous. That's such a great fact. So then in Mayan times, Claire, um, chocolate or cocoa beans were um, used as currency and they were even more valuable than gold dust. Yes, that's right, Sam. It's fantastic, isn't it? Really good learning. Let's go over to Greenway Primary and find out what you already know about uh, chocolate. The average person in the UK eats one and a half kilos of chocolate a year. Wow, that sounds like a lot of chocolate. So the average person in, uh, in uh, Great Britain eats 11 kilograms of chocolate a year, Claire. Oh, that's too much. That's too <laughs> much. Whoever that is hasn't been listening to us about no. eating chocolate in moderation, have they? No, they haven't. <laughs> really great fact, though. Let's go to St. Teresa's Primary now. The world's largest chocolate bar weighs 5,792 kilograms. Wow. So, Claire, the, the world's largest chocolate bar weighed 5,792 kilograms. That's so heavy. That would be so, so heavy. Imagine you wouldn't be able to eat all that on your own, no, would you? No, you couldn't. <laughs> really great fats, children. Now, Claire, I'd like to learn more about the cacao tree because you said that they grew in tropical climate. So I'm guessing we don't have many of those trees in, in Great Britain. No, sadly, Sam, it's too cold here, much too cold. Too, too cold, we need more sunshine and, we, and more humidity, yeah, I guess. Yeah, that's right. So how come chocolate first came to Europe then? Okay, so chocolate came here when uh, explorers first went to the country we now know as Mexico. So they found the Aztec people there were using chocolate as a hot drink. So they brought this back to Europe where the Spanish people added things like honey and sugar and this became very popular for the aristocrats of Europe. Now actually recently they found, um, historians found a kitchen in Hampton Court Palace in Surrey. Uh, this was a kitchen just like this dedicated to just making chocolate. Wow, um, that is amazing. And we can see that kitchen now on the screen. Imagine it, such an extravagant thing to have a kitchen solely dedicated to chocolate. So it would be the likes of like the kings and very, very rich people back then, yes, wouldn't it? Yes, that's right. And you've got to remember that uh, imported foods back then were extremely expensive. Yeah, so only the very special few. Thankfully, it's not as expensive now. <laughs> so, so chocolate was imported from Central America then? Yes, that's correct. Great stuff. Well, we're learning so much. Time to learn a little bit more now. Let's uh, find out how cacao is grown and harvested in those tropical regions. What is cacao? Have you ever wondered which ingredients go into making chocolate? Would you be surprised to learn that one of the main ingredients is a kind of seed that looks like this. The seeds grow on cacao trees, which can be found in warm tropical regions, such as here in the Ivory Coast, which is on the west coast of Africa, nearly 3,000 miles away from the United Kingdom. They also grow in lots of other countries in the tropics, such as Ecuador, Brazil, and Indonesia. This is because all of these places are warm and humid. The cacao trees produce large colourful pods that look like this, hard and melon shaped. They grow straight from the trunk and larger branches of the trees. And once they have ripened from green to yellow, red or orange, the farmer knows they're ready for harvest. There are a few different varieties of cacao. The trees resemble apple trees and grow no more than 25 feet tall. The farmer harvests the cacao pods using a very sharp blade. It's hard work in the hot sun, but the farmers are very skilled. The pods are then cut open to reveal the white fleshy fruit and seeds inside. They typically contain more than 50 seeds each. As you can see, the fresh seeds don't look anything like chocolate at this point. They're not even brown in colour. The seeds are then taken to a processing house. First, the seeds are placed into wooden boxes like this and covered with large banana leaves to protect them. This process allows the seeds to develop a richer flavour and is known as fermentation. 
During fermentation, the seeds turn from white to brown. Once they are fermented, the next stage is to dry the seeds. This takes around a week, and during this process, the dried seeds lose so much water that they end up around half their original weight. They are now called cocoa beans and look like this. Next, the cocoa beans are roasted in a machine. Roasting makes sure that any bacteria that might be present is killed. And it also helps to give the beans a nice flavour and colour. The roasted beans are then winnowed. This process separates the outer husk so that only the inside remains. The inside is the most important part, as this is used to make the chocolate. The beans are then ground and heated so that they melt into what we call a chocolate liquor. Once the chocolate liquor has cooled down, it sets and becomes what is called cocoa mass. It is then ready to be transported by ship to factories all over the world, where it will be made into tasty chocolate for you to enjoy as a treat. Welcome back children, we hope you enjoyed that. How fascinating to think that chocolate comes from the seeds of a tropical tree. And the seeds are inside here, you can probably hear me shaking them. And the seeds actually come from this and turn into this. This, this is a chocolate block caramel yolky bar. And this is what we're going to be making today in the factory today, Sam. Fabulous stuff. So we are out inside the factory. We've left the workshop. So where does this process start then, Claire? OK, so we're going to start at the beginning, making the caramel yolky part. Mm -hmm. So on this machine, we have nozzles. Um, so one nozzle will have the caramel, which is the centre, and the other nozzle will produce the chocolate. So the caramel slowly goes through, pumps in, and it will create a dome. So the caramel will be in the centre and the yellow chocolate will be around the outside. It sounds absolutely yummy. <laughs> <laughs> so here we are, we've got the one-shot machine here. So you've got lovely, delicious yellow chocolate on the left-hand side, and then you've got delicious caramel on the right-hand side. Now what this does, as you just saw, it pumps it into the mould, and then it will come down here where they'll give it a little tap and then over to here onto the large conveyor belt. Wow, so there's quite a few of them there just going through. So That's right. where does that conveyor belt go? Then, so Claire? this is actually a giant fridge. So the chocolates here will be wet chocolate here. It will go down this freezing cold fridge out to the other end and then where it can be demolded. Wow. So what you can see here is the little yellow yolk that we were just making on the machine. So if I come around here, and we'll cut one open and see what it looks like. Oh, is this going to have the lovely caramel inside? So you can see here, oh, oh the gooey, delicious caramel. Just like the yolk of an egg. Very, exactly. very clever, Claire. So what happens next is they'll then give it to the next machine. Yeah. So they'll do it, use it for decorating. OK. So we'll come over to this. This is our 03 machine. So these are moulds, our chocolate block moulds. We'll pass them through the machine where the milk chocolate and white chocolate will create the bar. Wow, so they get filled up. Exactly. So it pumps it out of the machine. So if we come over to here. Great stuff. So this is the white chocolate. Yes, this is the oh. white chocolate. So we've got milk chocolate at the bottom and then creamy, delicious white chocolate which pumps on the top. Wow, that is just absolute heaven. Hello so, everybody, hey children. Hi ladies. Hey, hi. So this is where they do the decorating. So you can see the bars now come out nice and wet so they can add the delicious caramel yokies that we just made on the machine from before. Fantastic, well they're shaping up very nicely but they're going back through to a, another fridge, is this Claire? Yes, this is another giant conveyor belt. This is a giant fridge, it goes all the way through our factory. Wow, fantastic. So this is quite a long fridge. So how long does this take? Um, it actually takes 20 minutes from when the bar is wet and then it'll come out the other end completely hard and you can snap it, demold it, and then it'll go off for packing. Great stuff. And here they are.
so here we are at the end of the fridge. So as you can see, the chocolates will come out of this end uh, where they can demold them and then pop them out and they're nice Great. and hard. So you Fabulous. You can see, you can now snap. Amazing. So these are going to be for Easter time. So they're going to be packed up and then they will go out and be on, yeah, on the so shelves in Easter. Special treat for Easter. So what happens is after they've made these here, they'll then wrap them in the foil and then they'll pack them and they'll go off to the stores. Wow, and that's how chocolate is made. A special treat for Easter. It smells absolutely amazing. Thank you, Claire, for showing us that. Let's find out a little bit more about how chocolate is made in this short video. How is chocolate made? One of the main ingredients of milk and dark chocolate and the thing that gives them their distinctive brown colour is cacao. Cacao seeds are harvested in tropical regions and made into what we call cocoa mass. Chocolate is made in different strengths depending on how much cocoa is used. Dark chocolate has the most cocoa, milk chocolate has less and white chocolate has no cocoa mass at all, but it does contain cocoa butter, which also comes from cacao seeds. Chocolate comes in many different flavours, such as orange, mint and even chilli. The cocoa mass is shipped to factories like this one, in France, where lots of different chocolate products are made. First, the solid cocoa mass is unpacked from its box and placed on a conveyor belt before being crushed by a machine like this so that it can be combined with the other ingredients. Milk powder, sugar and cocoa mass are weighed out and measured before being mixed together in these tanks. Then all the mixed ingredients are crushed again to create a finer paste. Next, they're melted and churned together to make a smooth chocolate liquid, which is then stored in big tanks like these before being tempered by a machine like this. Tempering means the chocolate is cooled down with only tiny uniform crystals forming. Finally, the chocolate is molded, shaken to remove any air bubbles and chilled to create a solid bar. The chocolate is now ready to be wrapped up and put into boxes, then sent to stores so it can be bought and eaten as a special treat. Welcome back children, we hope you enjoyed that. How great was inside the factory? Not quite as good as inside this workshop though, Claire. I'm so glad to be back in here because you have got an amazing array of chocolates here in front of us. But I am told that all these boxes are full of fascinating things as well. What are inside these? Yeah, that's right, Sam. So I've got hundreds and thousands of different ideas that we've come up with. Um, and also I've got lots of ingredients for topping and designing like I've got these chocolate balls or lovely bits of coconut oh. and also different sort of chocolate beans, all sorts. So it's your idea, your, your uh, job to come up with all these amazing ideas and put them all together and just really experiment with chocolate, isn't it? Yes, that's right. I have to do it all day. No! Oh, well, I know that our children have been giving experimenting with chocolate a go. I bet it was lots and lots of fun. I'd love to know how you got on. So let's go to Beacon Primary. Now, I know you've been experimenting with melting chocolate. So first of all, was chocolate melted first? The dark chocolate melted first because it has less sugar and milk. So the dark chocolate melted first because it's got less sugar and milk. Are you okay? No. Well done, children. Very well done. Great experiment there. Let's go over to Front Street Primary now and find out how you got on. I'd love to know which surface the chocolate melted on first and why. The chocolate on the radiator are melted first in the... It melted even faster when wrapped in tin foil. 
So on the radiator, uh, the chocolate melted quicker, but even quicker when it was wrapped up in tin foil. Oh yes. So right. it kind of, I suppose, radiated inside yeah. and kept it nice and warm. Well done. We really hope you enjoyed doing your experiments. You did a great job. Now, Claire, first of all, tell me about these chocolates here because have you made all these? I did. So recently, Sam, I've been playing around with Christmas. So I'm actually doing Christmas next year. Oh, wow. OK. So I've been coming up with all sorts of different ideas from trees to candy cane to white chocolate that looks like snow um, I use things like this white chocolate now this is actually just made from cocoa butter and sugar and added flavors so you can make things like snowmen snowmen would be brilliant this time of year exactly. or for next year now and also if I'm playing around with milk chocolate I can make things like these chocolate popping candy Santas. Wow. So they really sound good. amazing. <laughs> so they've got things like added milk powder and things like that which makes them the creamy colour that they are. Yeah. And I'll also play with dark chocolate. And actually I've been making this giant Santa here. He is great. <laughs> I know I've been uh, Iron him up all day. He is amazing. He does look a bit bare at the moment, though. He does. Yeah. I'm going to need some help decorating him, actually, if well, you wouldn't mind. I'm your girl. <laughs> so I've got here some red sparkle and some gold sparkle. Right, OK. Let me do a bit of red, because of course Santa's outfit is uh, his red. So let's do his hat. Oh, this is brilliant. Oh, it's so glittery. So you can eat this um, if you were to have it on, on chocolate, Claire. Is that OK, the glitter? Yeah, that's just right. Just give it a little there brush. There we go. Yeah. And a little bit of gold. Wow, this is just the best job you have, Claire. It's amazing. Thank you. Fantastic. But you have so much chocolate around you. Do you have a favourite type of chocolate if you're going to eat it yourself? Um, I would say mine is probably the oh. milk chocolate. <laughs> Sorry, Santa, your nose is a gold as well. <laughs> so milk chocolate. Milk I, I, chocolate. I actually it's really nice and creamy. I like the dark chocolate because mm -hmm. I think you can just have a small piece of that and it's quite fruity and then yeah. it sort of satisfies your your need for chocolate. Lovely. Well, thank you so much for letting us uh, see all this amazing workshop and for letting me decorate Santa. I wouldn't give this to anybody. <laughs> I think I've actually made a bit of a mess of him. Um, unfortunately, we're coming to the end of today's online field trip, but there's just enough time to get some questions uh, from our school. So let's go to St. Teresa's primary now. Why is chocolate harmful to some animals like dogs but not humans? That's a really great question. So Claire, do you know why chocolate is harmful for dogs if they were to eat it and uh, not to humans? Okay, it's actually because of a toxin called theobromine. Now, this is a process that dogs, when they digest it, they can't actually process. It becomes a poison, whereas humans can digest it. So that's why it's fine for us. Ah, so dogs can't process something inside the chocolate. Really, really great question. And thank you, Claire. Let's go over to Beacon Primary now. Do we have a question from Miss Stokes' class? Why does chocolate go back to its sunny state after it is cold? That's a really great question. I think that's Bethany. Bethany would like to know, why does chocolate go back to its solid state when it's cooled? OK, well, that's actually a very technical question. It's all to do with the melting points and the crystallisation inside the chocolate. It's actually something that you guys need to investigate more. Great, really good question. Let's go over to Front Street Primary now. Do we have a question from Mr Hollingworth's class? Who discovered that cocoa pods could be made into chocolate bars? That's a really great question. So who discovered that cocoa pods could be made into chocolate bars, Claire? Well, if you can remember earlier when I was talking about the history, um, it was actually when the Aztec people um, were drinking the hot chocolate and the Europeans brought it back. Mm -hmm. So they played around and added different things and the Europeans actually then created bars. Fabulous stuff, really great questions. Can we go back over to Greenway Primary? Is there such a job as someone who invents new chocolate bars? Well, that's a really great question. I think Claire might be able to answer this. So Claire, is there such a job as inventing chocolate bars? Well, children, that's actually my job. So I have to create all sorts of different new bars every single day. Great. Really great questions from our schools. We have a question that has come through uh, on our Twitter. Um, Grace from Westfield Primary would like to know, how many cocoa beans are used to make one bar of chocolate, Claire? It all depends on the size of the bar. 
Yeah, I suppose that the biggest chocolate bar that we heard earlier on, which was 5,000 and something kilograms, I guess needed quite a few of those beans. That would be right, yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Grace, as well, for sending in that question. We really appreciate it. And Claire, amazing answers. And thank you so much for having us here as well. I don't think I want to leave this chocolate factory. <laughs> uh, one final question. It's a bit of a silly question. What is your favourite thing about your job? Oh, my favourite thing about the job would be when... I make something in here and it becomes successful out in the chocolate factory and then I see it out in the shops and on the shelves. Oh, that must be so satisfying. Mm. Yeah, well, keep making the chocolate, please, for us. Mm. And we'll keep eating it in moderation as a treat. Mm. <laughs> Thank you, Claire. And don't forget, children, if you'd like to take part in a free farm to fork trail in the new year, then you just need to get signed up on the website and everything you need to know is there. You'll be able to learn all about where your favourite foods come from and have lots of fun in the process too, as well, just like the children are having on the screen right now. So get yourself signed signed up from that for that but for myself and Claire here at this amazing chocolate factory um, it's a goodbye goodbye Cold Harbour Primary great to have you with us goodbye Greenway Primary goodbye St Teresa's Primary been really great having you with us. Let's go over to Beacon Primary now and say a big goodbye. <laughs> great stuff. And finally, let's go over to Front Street Primary now. Goodbye, everybody. Brilliant stuff. You really have been a great bunch on this online field trip. Join us for more food adventures in the new year, starting with Long Leaks. That will be taking place on the 21st of January as well. So join us for that. And don't forget, we've got dozens of these online field trips online, ready for you to watch and resources as well, ready for you to download so you can learn all about where your favourite food comes from as well. We'll see you in the new year. In the meantime, Merry Christmas. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>